Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to connect the Centurion D5 Smart Gate Automator to your alarm system as a zone. And what I mean by that is if somebody tries to tamper with your D5 Smart, it has the ability to have an alarm function. What that means is the unit has a vibration sensor and if it's knocked or if the gate is bumped or somebody's trying to tamper, it will activate an output and that output can be used as an input to your alarm system. You will need your phone to configure the controller and you will need a relay board. I will show you all the steps in this video. The first step is to remove the cover. Right, now once you've got this open, you will see that you've got a 12 volt output over there and you've got these I.O. terminals over here. I.O. standing for input or output. These are dual personality ports. You've got six I.O. ports. The ones that are of interest in this video are I.O. 5 and I.O. 6. You can see that on I.O. 5 I already have a wire connected to that terminal. Now I've placed my meter there to explain how this is going to function. If I measure the output from the 12 volt terminal and I.O. 5, you can see that the voltage is very low. It's only reading 1.275 volts. That is not enough to activate a siren or a relay, specifically a 12 volt relay. Now how this works is when it senses an abnormality, for example, maybe somebody bumped it or somebody's trying to fiddle with the gate, it will change this IO5 to allow current to travel into it which means that the 12 volts which is sitting over here there is currently 12 volts there and I'll just show it to you the 12 volts that's sitting over here if I go between 12 volts and common you can see there's the 12 volts but if I go between 12 volts and IO5 you can see that it's not allowing current to flow and that is why the voltage is so low so what happens is in an alarm condition IO5 will go to ground and when it goes to ground it allows the 12 volts to flow so if you can put a relay board in between that, you then have a switch operation here. And the reason why you need the relay board is most alarms require a contactor, either normally open or normally closed with a serial connected resistor in order to act as a zone. Don't worry, I'm going to go and show you each step of the connections. I'm just going through the principle of operation. So if you have a look here, I'm going to connect my lead to the 12 volt output and the other side to IO5. If I bump the controller, it should alarm, but I have not programmed the unit to activate as an alarm. So as you can see, nothing is happening. Now, if I take my phone and I set the alarm function to arm over there, if you have a look over there, I can switch the alarm on or off. So it's currently off and now I'm going to switch it on. Right, it is now armed, and if you have a look, if I bump this, watch what happens over there and listen out for the noise. Right, so what happened is this 12 volt was allowed to flow into IO5 because IO5 went to ground, meaning that it allowed the current to flow from that terminal over there. And as you can see, I've got wires here and this is connected to a siren. That is the noise you heard. So what it means is the positive of the siren is connected here and the negative of the siren is connected here. And that is why I measured close to 12 volts there. Now, if you can connect a relay board, you can then use that as a trigger for your alarm or a pulse. Right, so this was my siren. This is my negative and that was my positive. Now, I've disconnected my siren and I want to use a relay board instead or both if you want to. Now, if you have a look at my relay board, it's got a negative and a positive. So the negative is going to IO5 and the positive is going to the positive 12 volt because this is a 12 volt relay board. Now, if you have a look at the other terminals, it's got a common, normally closed, normally open. So that means that if the relay is deactivated, the common and normally closed are touching each other or having continuity. So if I show you with the meter, if the meter is set to continuity to measure a short circuit, watch. Okay, that sound is telling me there's a short circuit. So if I go to common and normally closed, you can hear it is short circuited. The relay is deactivated. If I go to common and normally open, it is an open circuit because the relay is deactivated. The minute the relay activates, normally closed becomes open and normally open becomes closed. So that provides you with that pulse for your alarm system and I will demonstrate it now. 
Right, so the unit currently is configured to have an alarm function. So if I bump this, it should activate the relay. I will still show you how to set those alarm settings up. And I will just want you to firstly have a look at the relay board. When it is activated, a little red light comes on there. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the common there and the normally closed there. And you can see that it's a short circuit. But watch what happens when the alarm activates from the D5. Light went on, open circuit. The alarm is deactivated because I only set it for five seconds and then the normally closed becomes normally open. So on your alarm panel, you can set that as a zone because on most alarms, they work on a normally closed signal, meaning the zone is unviolated or not violated. But the minute the zone becomes violated, it becomes an open circuit. So all you would need to do is connect the wires to your zone. Maybe you want to connect this to zone 10. So you'll connect the one wire from zone 10 to there and the other wire through your series resistor to normally closed position. I will show you on the alarm panel where I connected it, but for now I'll just carry on over here. If you want to sound at your gate and the relay, that is fine. Then here is my siren wire and there is my relay wire. Here is my siren connected where there are those white wires. If you're wondering what this black tape is, it's just that it's too loud for me to record while the siren's at full volume. So I've just taped it up to reduce the volume. So here, if somebody is trying to tamper with the gate, you should hear the siren as well as the relay should function. Now I'll show you the relay board which is currently connected to the system and with the wires going to the alarm system. This is my actual connection to my alarm. This is my relay board. It's the same function, it just looks a little bit different. So there I have the positive coming in from the D5 and there is the negative coming in from the D5. You'll just have two wires. I've got four because I've got an additional circuit running off here. There is my alarm zone. There you can see I've got the terminating resistor, the series resistor. In this case, it's an IDS alarm, so it's a 3K3 resistor. Please put the resistor on this side and not at the main panel. Although the relay does already provide you with galvanic isolation, having the resistor here helps reduce the chance of any spikes moving through to your alarm panel because it will see this as a high impedance path with this 3K3 resistor. So it is the common, normally closed, and when the alarm activates or the D5 activates an alarm condition, this gets open circuited. At the moment, it's a short circuit here, and it'll get open circuited when the relay activates because the D5 senses an alarm condition. Right, so do you recall it was a green and yellow wire? Well, here it is. This happens to be on this expander board. So there is the green and yellow acting as a zone, telling me that somebody's tampered with the gate. Right, I've activated the alarm at the gate, and if you have a look here, it will come up. It says gate tamper. And if the alarm was set, the alarm would actually go off. All right, I'll briefly explain to you how to set this up using the app. You'll need to find the app in the App Store or the Play Store. Now, the app is called My Senses Pro. Now, I've already registered and connected to the unit. Now, all I do is I go to the three dots. I say settings. I'll then come to alarms. There it says tamper or theft alarm. I'll click on that. I'll put this to the on position. Auto arm is also in the on position. The sensitivity, I've set mine to high. You can set yours to medium or low or your custom level. Then over here, this is very important, is the assigned input output terminal. You can see that I've set mine to IO5. And the reason why I've chosen IO5 is because I'm using a siren as well. And the siren, I think, is about 15 watts. So it requires a little over one amp. Therefore, I need to use a IO terminal which can handle more than one amp. As you can see, the other IOs are low current applications. If you're only going to be using the relay, well, then any of these would be fine because it can handle 100 milliamps and a relay is very low current draw. So I've used IO5. If you are not using the siren, it's fine. You can still use IO5. It will be fine. Then you want to go back and then you want to determine how long you want the pulse length to be. The pulse length is the time that the output changes position, meaning if it was at zero volts, it will go to 12 volts. How long must it be in that position for? So you can see mine is set to five seconds. You can set yours for longer. If you're connecting just to the alarm, anything more than half a second is sufficient. Right, then you press the back button, the back button, 
it'll update the terminal 